I think it, this is a kind of combined looking at, at two angles. One is the understanding that we need to concentrate not just on saving these patients that are relapsing and, and relapsing in, in after a long time, but also for these newly diagnosed patients, if we concentrate our power, giving them a very effective treatment. Again, talking about daratumumab and now another trial with isatuximab, which is um, another uh, uh, new anti-CD38 antibody. So combining them with the standard of care, bortezomib, revlimid, and dexamethasone VRD treatment, combining these four drugs together gets excellent results. We have a long time, we have the, um, the uh, isatuximab showing very nice um, uh, results in terms of minimal residual disease. So most patients, uh, over 50% of patients will achieve minimal residual disease a long time um, with the combination. And same goes in, with daratumumab now in two years of follow-up of the Griffin trial where we've seen extremely deep responses already. And now they're only deepening a long time as you give daratumumab and lenalidomide maintenance a long time. So patients will be will have more and more um, deep responses, which will translate into very long progression-free survival, uh, meaning that the disease will not come back in many years in these patients. So this is very important in first line. In advanced line, I think we're going over really a, um, a revolution. In a way, we've seen the long-term results of um, the... Uh, CAR T cell trials. So we have the CARTITUDE and the, the um, Bluebird trials, which are showing very prolonged duration of responses for patients. And most patients, I mean, in, in one trial, over 70% with very advanced patients, over six lines or seven lines of treatment, and, and with uh, uh, um, both uh, technologies where you take the T cells and you re-educate against BCMA to target these uh, very resistant plasma cells, even these very heavily predicted patients achieve very deep responses. And the nice thing about it is it seems like they're becoming very prolonged responses. And to that, we add the newly bispecific antibodies. So there are multiple trials now ongoing showing prolonged responses and very deep responses with these antibodies. They mimic the CAR T in a way. So one side of the antibody will bind the uh, immune system and the other side will bind plasma cells and they bring the immune system with the plasma cells. So together, um, this will cause the immune system to destroy the plasma cells. And again, we see very high response rate. And now after a year or two years of follow-up, Many patients stay in remission, and this is very amazing for, for very advanced patients. And to that, we had other antibodies like belantamab, which there are trials showing a way to make it better, and maybe new imids that are coming now. There is a, uh, it's called cell mods. It's not called anymore imids. It's, it's the next generation pomalidomide called iberdomide showing very nice responses. So in a way, the future of myeloma in the next few years is going to be very bright, uh, things are changing, responses are better, side effects are less. Um, I think there's a very good perspective. And Ash, we had two major talks about AL amyloidosis. The one is the follow-up of the Andromeda uh, clinical trial. The Andromeda clinical trial is a trial where newly diagnosed patients we randomized to receive either the standard of, of care treatment, which is bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone, which mo most patients will, will know and, and recognize as the, the um, regimen that most patients receive, to the same regimen plus the addition of daratumumab, which is a new drug. Um, actually, by now, it's, it's, it's been going for a while, and it's given uh, as a um, subcutaneous um, fixed dose and to see both the safety and the efficacy of the addition of daratumumab as first line daratumumab is an antibody uh, which targets the plasma cells. So the whole regimen idea is to lower the amount of uh, uh, secreted amyloidogenic light chains as fast as possible and as deep as possible in order to regain organ function. 
So the main idea was to get to the hematologic response, which is complete response. This is what we really want with the patients in order to, to achieve these goals of, of either um, better survival benefits and uh, saving their organs, which are damaged by these amyloidogenic light chains, which are secreted by the plasma cells. So what we can see, um, what we already know and have seen um, uh, in the initial results of the Andromeda trial, what the patients receiving the daratumumab on top of the bortezomib vel uh, velcade uh, cyclophosphamide dexamethasone treatment managed to achieve a much better results in terms of achieving a complete remission. And this did not initially um, translate into survival benefit in terms because patients who do bad will do bad no matter what they get. But most patients did well in both arms. However, those who got the daratumumab has achieved maybe three times better results a long time. And now after two years of follow-up, we can see that these patients who are getting these deep results, uh, mostly the patients who are getting daratumumab managed to achieve better organ responses, meaning that their um, hearts worked better and their kidneys worked better even after um, half a year and much more than that, a long time. So over half the patients have recovered their organ functions along two years of follow-up, especially when they got the daratumumab. And this has led to um, a signing now in, in the United States and close now by in Europe as well, daratumumab in first line uh, in conjunction with bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone for the treatment of AL patients. And this is probably the first regimen that is being registered ever uh, for a lamyloidosis, which is very much different from the treatments given up till now, which are really taken from the myeloma uh, world. Um, so this is the first abstract, which I think is, is, is very uh, important to talk about. The other abstract, which is um, also uh, very interesting and has um, kind of a follow-up over the um, new antibody to dissolve the amyloido, um, amyloidogenic material that accumulates in the organs, mostly the heart and the kidney. The um, antibody is called KL-101. It is a monoclonal antibody which was manufactured to, to recognize the kappa or the lambda light chains, which are um, um, sedimenting in the organs and to remove them from the organs. So this uh, uh, phase one, two uh, study uh, managed to give this antibody once every two weeks. And the good thing about it is that patients had very limited side effects. So there weren't too many side effects when the patient got them. Um, not a lot of patients, but these patients who got it had heart involvement and kidney involvement. And the amazing thing about it is that almost all patients or, or a significant amount of them has responded in terms of getting their organs uh, function better. Both cardiac patients and um, kidney patients where, where the uh, protein secreted in the urine was uh, um, lessening a long time. Same goes for uh, uh, heart uh, uh, function as measured by pro B and P levels, uh, which was um, which were getting better a long time. So in, in general, there is a hope, and in this monoclonal antibody is now being tested in a very large clinical trial worldwide uh, in newly diagnosed patients again with bortezomib, uh, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone, or with daratumumab. Uh, bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone. So these are two very good news for amyloidosis, amyloidosis patients. As, as I was showing, um, it was approved for a reason because the artumab has shown very nice results, uh, especially a long time in these patients, making them, uh, rendering them um, with better organ function, a long time, which is really something that we were missing even in, in large clinical trials. And the next drug that we hope that will come into, into treatment in amyloidosis patients is, is uh, certainly the one that I was talking about, the KL-11, because this is a hope to target the amyloid from the other side instead of targeting the manufacturing 
of the amyloidogenic light chains, it targets the sediment, the, the end point result of AL amyloidosis, uh, the sedimentation of these, uh, of these um, light chains in, in the organs. So when we are talking about a way to prevent amyloid from becoming amyloid and to stop the toxicity of these light chains over the, the organs, now there will be another way to maybe remove it from the organs and a long time both uh, uh, combined together probably will bring much uh, uh, results to, um, to these very sick patients. Currently, we in most patients, we will be using a bortezomib-based protocol in first line, usually combined with chemotherapy. Patients with amyloid do not, uh, unlike myeloma patients, do not, do not um, tolerate very well lenalidomide or revlimid, which is uh, used in, in many myeloma patients in first line. So most patients will receive this protocol, bortezomib, uh, cyclosomide, dexamethasone, um, probably in the near future, daratumumab will be added to it. Uh, for relapsing patients, we have other, other medications. We do use the IMIDs, mostly um, uh, Revlimid, but which is sometimes very difficult to take. So many patients will be switched to pomalidomide, which is much better tolerated a long time. And in the near future, well, hopefully we'll see other technologies emerging from myeloma treatment like um, belantamab, which targets BCMA, it's another molecule on the, on the plasma cells over the um, CD38 that is now being targeted and may show many hopes uh, in myeloma patients. Probably it will be effective as well for amyloidosis patients. Another uh, new molecule which is emerging is venetoclax. Most patients with um, amyloid, over 50% of them, not most of them, over 50% of them will harbor uh, translocation in their cells of the chromosomes 11 and 14. And for some reason, this fusion protein that becomes of this translocation is very sensitive to a new medication called venetoclax. We have lots of experience of venetoclax with venetoclax in uh, leukemias, chronic and acute leukemias. However, it is very, very effective in these 11, 14 patients with myeloma and probably with amyloid as well. So maybe in the future, this will become another very important drug in amyloidosis treatment.